Hey everybody, it's Sad Road and welcome back to Salt on the Earth. And the last we left off, oh well, it's been a little bit since I recorded the last episode. I don't exactly remember. I'm having conflicted memories of what happened last. It was either um, the Rue discussing her um, dissatisfaction with her position, or it was the instance with Hazari and Edda, and I don't remember which one of those two was that happened the last one, or which I'm, uh, uh, what order I'm mixing them up in. Uh, but, 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 but in, the, in any case, let's just move on. That makes it the time someone's walked into a kitchen bench top. Be careful. Bench top looks expensive. Really? You worry about, you worry about bench top? What about me, girl? Pfft. Something on your mind? Uh, okay, this seems familiar. Oh, wait, okay. <laughs> uh, right, right at this. Okay, you made me smile. So, sexual favor. When you collecting, huh? I completely forgot about that. I didn't know if it was ever gonna be brought back up. How did I give Sakan and Orin pro the promise of sex without even meaning to? Didn't you just get out of a relationship then? A failed one. So, you into scars? Sakan is cute, tall, and muscular. The three things I like in a woman. Could it be why my past relationships didn't last long? Are you both done? Uh oh. <laughs> Hello, Etta. Should I get back to work now? Or only after your frivolous flirting? Alliteration. Nice. Like it. Sorry, chef. <clears throat> uh, sorry. Etta's eyes drilled at me like I have a painted target on my forehead. Sexual favor? This is all new to me. <laughs> what exactly do you gain from her in return? Uh, I tried pulling Etta by her arm closer to the door away from the others. Edda refuses to budge as I'm pulling on a large tree. To avoid eavesdropping, I press myself to Edda. It's like that, Edda. Edda's sun-colored eyes bore into mine. This time, instead of a dull emptiness, they flicker with signs of anger. Oh, shit. What a deep now it would seem. Oh. She is just as confused as I am. That's not really right to be. That's, uh, yeah. Ugh. That was a bad time for that little bit of um, teasing to come back. <laughs> okay, don't do that. Ah, it burns. Someone decides this is the perfect time to drop things on the ground. I can just throw a spoon at them thrown in the scene. At this distance, it'll be so easy. Not to mention I'm practically a master aiming for things. Edda shakes her head in defeat. I would like to hear that explanation. Edda moves toward the incident, only halting for a moment to shoot a glance at Sakan. After making sure Edda is fully occupied, Sakan comes up whispering in my ears. You didn't tell me you were a chef's girl? Oh, question mark. Not cool. What? I'm Edda's? Was that Edda acting jealous? Rue. Sweetie. What did you think it was? <laughs> Look, as dense as I am, come on. <laughs> she would get jealous over me? Rue, can you do this for me? The cook sacked a dozen tray of eggs on my bench top. All right. Before I could think of the way, uh, that was... Before I could think it was the end of it, she stacked a dozen more trays right next to the first. Ah! When did this dinner before lunch? How do I even... I'm not aware which aspect of my physique screams egg cracking machine. Please, Rue. The cook pleads. She knows I can't say no. Ah, oh, fine. These have been giving me more variation on my tasks. That happened last time? I don't remember. Instead of staying in my usual group, I'm sitting with Cray for lunch. As a Sue, she could have her lunch with the rest of the residents, yet she only stands back with the cooks. As, I, as always, I leave a gap between us. Others try to beckon me over, but I give them a small head shake while pointing at Query. Query doesn't seem to mind using uh, her me doesn't seem to mind me using her as an excuse to have some peace and quiet. Speaking of peace and quiet, I like to call this recording a let's play. Technically, while people are doing lawn work outside ASMR, it sucks, doesn't it? <laughs> Are you really coming from- No, okay, not coming from their pass. They're just moving. I oh, know they are. There they are. 
you just mow right that never mind. Uh, but a bit of that peace and quiet. What is she doing, Nighttime Query? I want to learn more about you. What do you like? Query pauses, her eyes hit the room. I think we had this conversation before. I think. Ah, here we are. So, you and Etta. I don't want to talk about it right now. If Etta is only to hear me out this afternoon, I doubt there's still an us. Okay, sorry. Aw. As usual, I wait for Etta after everyone else has left the break. 10 minutes, and then 20 minutes. My anxiety swells thicker and more unbearable as the clock ticks away indifferently at the back of the kitchen. I stir through my pot of seafood curry, turning down the heat before it bubbles up. Not bad. She'd like it. Did I imagine her telling me to stay back? What if it doesn't care enough to show up? I told myself weeks ago that I only wanted something casual. I'm not ready for something deeper. And yet I let Etta get to me. She's a free woman and I was one who made it seem like there was more between us with the constant reading in her behavior and her words. The door creaks open when I think of leaving. Etta? You're still here? What do you mean? You were the one who told me to wait. My hands are itching to slap that nonchalant look on her face. Okay, nah. -uh. <laughs> Coming back day after day, you must adore me. The same can be said about you, can it? You staying back with me day after day, the girl might get the wrong idea. That is a fair assessment, my dear. What does that know about fairness? It's always been on her terms. Uh oh. There's something inscrutable about Edda that says no touching, and I try to listen to it. No touching, not deliberately, only she could do it to me. But sometimes, once in a while, definitely deliberately, I would put my hand on her arm to gauge her reactions. But wait, but if it was to gauge her reaction, wouldn't that make it deliberate? No, okay, I, 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 she would pause what she was doing, and that probably meant two words, no and touching. What am I to you, Edda? Can you just tell me no? Tell me you're not curious about you and me and I'll drop it. Tell me that you never thought about how good it would feel to be together. Stop playing games, you know? Etta takes her time to overthink it while the creeping silence draws a heavy sigh from my lips. I cannot tell you no. You tempt me too much, my dear. Even if she didn't straight out admit to liking me, the thick tensions finally left my chest. And it's plays in the soft, glowing warmth. So, what is this? Etta notices a small pot out on the stove. She takes a curious sip of the curry broth with a clean spoon and smiles to herself. Seafood curry. Do you like it? The seasoning is not overpowering or spicy. The ingredients still have a bit of chew in them. Etta seems to hold back a butt. But... No but. I like how you made her to my palate. You're happy with it? Then can I finally get the special privilege to cook for real? A good job is all about connections, isn't it? I need to think about it. How about the next best thing to reward me? The next best thing? A kiss. A kiss. A kiss. Etta repeats my sentence as she circles around me. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I shiver when her warm hand touches the small of my back. The next best thing, is it? Her footsteps are louder and more deliberate than usual. She stops right behind me. A lump lodges in my throat when her hand rises to my shoulder and wraps itself around my neck. Her fingers explore the skin there while I fall helplessly into her body. Oh. Huh. Etta's hand rises up against my chin as she presses a kiss on top of my head. We see that way for a few seconds without it nuzzling into my hair. A fog of mystery dissipates inside my head. I can pick up her scent at this distance. Etta's scent is as indistinctive as a tree in a large forest blending in the background. She smells the food we cooked. She smells the detergent we used to wash the clothes. I wish... 
You wish? I wish you had kissed me on my lips instead. Well, it was pleasant, it wasn't satiating. And what would I get out of that kiss? And I can show you how good it feels to kiss me. Etta contemplates. Her soft breaths caress my lips. We're so close, I could pull her down for a real kiss. As if she senses my poorly hidden intention, Etta pulls away. I did not misunderstand you, my dear. However, the workplace is hardly where we can explore that sort of thing. You're so proper. It's infuriating. My deepest apologies. <laughs> so sorry for inconveniencing you. <laughs> Oh, are you ready to talk about your thing with Sakan yet? Oh, goody, here we go. <laughs> oh, that was a misunderstanding. I was helping them with work. Some of Sakan and Oren thought I was propositioning to them. I have to say, you have the pension to get into the most ridiculous situations. I know, I was there for all of them, including the bit where I was on the roof. <laughs> well, the ledge, close enough. About you and Azari, I... I'd rather her not touching you like that. You and I are, are exclusive now. It's not what I'm saying. I just hate it. B barely caught that. I have to remember, if there's no closing exclamation marks on dialogue, it's probably going to keep going on its own. I don't have to click, usually. You can choose what you want to do with the information. Hazari is someone I want on my side. She's smart and resourceful, not unlike you. But if you dislike it, I will ask her to stop. That was easier than I thought. I'd like that. Keep in mind, I still need to work with her. Perhaps it was how she put it, the way her voice and her mannerism stayed in a constant state of static, unswayed and unchanged even after we shared a moment. I wish I could assemble a team of psychologists to dig into this woman's head. For now, I have to be content with her answer. Why doesn't have to ha uh, Hazari have tattoos like yourself? Have you asked her this question? Of course not. It's to make a sensitive topic, right? It is. And you were right. What else do you know about the sigil tattoos? Not much? Only that your tattoos represent your family name. Someone has done their homework. Our, signal, our sigils signify our family name and status. Then how come Azari doesn't have them? Does it have something, something to do with her being a gray? Very good guess. Our permanent sigil tattooing process is very painful. It involves scraping the outer layer before pe placing the ink on top. That sounds painful. Yeah, I parrot. The pain subsides eventually, though. Eventually. Okay. After a certain phase, when a red and when when red and green organs grow gray, it becomes itchy and uncomfortable. Wait, they weren't born gray? A fraction of organs turn gray on their own. Either partially or all at once. It's genetic. But I guess you can say that it's a curse. A curse. That's upsetting, Etta. It must be difficult to be a Grey Oregon. Not only do you have to put up with poor health and low life expectancy, but you might also lose a part of your cultural identity. Unlike other races, nym nymphs are not segregated into subspecies. The most distinctive difference we have is the distribution and density of our body hair. I hope it won't happen to you. Edda's gaze meets mine in a long and heavy silence. I... Yes? Nothing. <laughs> Let's get back to this curry. Okay, curious. Um, I have few ideas on how we can improve it. Edda's subtle change of topic didn't escape me. Instead of asking for her to follow up, I go along with her, uh, with her will. Okay. We make a few variations of my dish. As usual, we, as usual, we only make enough to taste. Can I see you tonight, Etta? Tonight? Yeah, if you're free, of course. We can do some sensual bumping. <laughs> nice phrasing. Is that your terminology for sex? <laughs> yeah. Sensual bumping. Firing your charcoals. Charting Netherlands. Unfortunately, I have to say no. Oh, and she was on a roll, too. I wanted to see what else she had. <laughs> Is it me? I, I, I can tone her down. Oh no. I have something to attend tonight. Right. 
Adam and Zarya were discussing a meetup tonight before I interrupted them. I know what you're thinking, but no. It'll be a management committee meeting. Strictly business, all right? All right. As I imagined, someone at his rank would be very busy. It may sound petty, but I wanted to prioritize me over her job one day. That, <sighs> I'd say a lot of people have that. And it's, un it's an understandable desire. The difference is not letting that get in the way, you know? It's, I'd say it's, it's okay and natural to have that want, but don't let that want become a problem. Don't actually try and control your partner, you know? That's where it turns toxic. Okay, we'll leave that for next time. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next episode of Salting the Earth. I am... Now even more curious about where this route's gonna be going. <laughs>